I'm Marty Stauffer. As clouds lift, the Earth is bathed in sunlight. Light waves scatter as they travel through our atmosphere, painting a landscape rich in color. Many plants and animals advertise themselves with vivid hues. For some, it pays not to advertise. Drab coloring has its rewards too, which is why many species favor the less eye-catching shades of gray. Animals, neutral in color, are not always what they seem. For instance, these are not gray foxes. They're a silver color phase of the red fox. And despite its blonde fur, this is not a polar bear, but rather a white color phase of the black bear. Neutral toned animals exhibit a surprising range of color phases from black to white. In the far north, white animals predominate. Largest and swiftest of all falcons is the jeer falcon. Flying fast and low to the ground, the jeer falcon uses the element of surprise to capture ptarmigan and other prey. Concealment is a ptarmigan's best defense, because once airborne, escape proves impossible, for no bird can outfly a jeer falcon. The range of these majestic birds of prey circles the globe in northern latitudes. Their plumage is either white, black, or various intergrades of gray. Black and white jeer falcons are rare, Gray is the dominant phase in most of their range. Jeer falcons prefer to nest in high places. Their nests, called aries, are built on the narrow ledges of steep rocky cliffs. A gray jeer falcon returns to her brood with an eagerly awaited meal. The mainstay of the chick's diet is ptarmigan, a tundra bird which jeer falcons specialize in catching. The number of nesting jeer falcons each year is cyclical, 
depending on the abundance of their prey. The female of this downy brood is a white jeer falcon. Her snowy white feathers barred with black mark her as one of the most valuable birds in the world. Middle East falconers have paid as much as $100,000 for one of these rare jeer falcons. Since differently colored adults interbreed, a brood may consist of two or more color phases. Her mate, a silver jeer falcon watches over his family from a nearby perch. Silver is an intermediate color phase between gray and white. One month later, the gray female prepares yet another meal for her almost grown chicks. Their newly fledged feathers reveal a rare color phase among her young. This chick is gray, like its mother. So is this one. This one, however, is a black jeer falcon. The black phase which is actually smoky gray in color, is seldom seen. Among the snow-capped mountain ranges of Alaska and Northwest Canada lives a mammal whose color varies according to its geographic distribution. These are doll sheep, the whitest and northernmost species of North America's wild sheep. A more southern subspecies of the doll is the dark gray stone sheep. Where the doll and stone sheep populations overlap in the Yukon and British Columbia, an intermediate color phase called Fannin's sheep occurs. Wild sheep require undisturbed wilderness to thrive. The frozen northern reaches of our continent offer a last stronghold for these handsome animals. Life above timberline may seem unbearably harsh to us, Doll sheep prefer it. Few other creatures are as well adapted for such extremes in climate and terrain. So by exploiting this specialized niche, they face less competition from other grazers. One of their secrets for survival is the insulating property of their hair. Unlike the wool of domestic sheep, wild sheep are covered by waxy, hollow hairs which trap warm air. and their white coloration no doubt affords them some protection against predators. Stone sheep are distinguished by a gray body with a white face, belly, and rump. Though often seen below tree line, they still prefer wind-blown summits where the views are long 
and the hillsides are steep. The inaccessibility of their habitat once kept them secluded from modern civilization. Now highways, planes, and even helicopters infringe on the solitude of their alpine domain. Salted highways provide a convenient, although dangerous, source of sodium for wildlife. For this reason, many sheep are killed by cars each winter. To big game hunters, bagging a stone or doll sheep is the ultimate hunting experience. For most people, however, just getting a close-up view of these wild rams is thrill enough. For all their wariness during the hunting season, this herd now seems unconcerned by the close encounter. All North American wild sheep evolved from a common ancestor which migrated here from Asia. Pockets of the original population became isolated by climatic changes. In time, they evolved slight differences. Here in the Yukon, the doll and stone sheep populations interbreed and produce the hybrid known as Fannin's sheep. By May, the burden of winter has lifted. More energy can now be devoted to play. To the west, along the coast of Canada, lives a bear of a different color. Contrary to their name, black bears are not always black. They're sometimes blue, brown, cinnamon, even white. With lush vegetation and rivers rich in salmon, this region supports a high concentration of black bears. From deep among the forest shadows emerges a ghost of a bear. It's called the Kermode bear. This is not an albino, but rather a white subspecies of the black bear. The Kermode bear inhabits coastal islands off British Columbia. Within this restricted range, inbreeding is more common. Consequently, genetic features which would otherwise disappear in a large, dispersed population become fixed. A recessive gene that shows up more frequently in isolated populations is responsible for their light fur.
Adult bears are solitary creatures, rarely seeking each other's company, except during the mating season. In early summer, a male locates a female and proceeds to follow her around. During their courtship, the two feed, rest, and play together. They'll mate numerous times in the week or so they stay together. Black bears have the greatest range of color variations among mammals. The offspring of this union may be black, white, or a number of other colors. The young are born in January or February during the female's long winter sleep. A rare blue color phase of the black bear roams the coastal wilderness of southeastern Alaska, the glacier bear. Icebergs floating in Yakutat Bay give this landscape an ancient and untamed allure. This is bear country. And one of the best ways to explore this remote environment is by boat. Of the three species of bears in Alaska, the polar, brown, and black, black bears are most often seen. Even so, it takes more than a little patience and a lot of luck to find a glacier bear. Not far from its coal black mate is the elusive blue bear. Binoculars and telephoto lens are usually the only way to get a close-up view of these bears. The unique coloring of the glacier and Kermode bears has always attracted trophy hunters seeking their unusual skins. To prevent their disappearance, these bears are given special protection from hunting. As a rule, black bears love water. In the Pacific Northwest, they spend much of their time in the mountain streams, splashing after salmon 
or simply lounging in the cool, soothing currents. In Terrace, British Columbia, local pride of their distinguished resident is depicted around the community. This town's claim to fame is another white animal, the white squirrels of Olney, Illinois, whose motif graces even the most official civic signs. This is the home of the largest population of albino squirrels in the United States. Albinism is a pigment mutation. Normally, albinos are rare. They make especially easy targets for predators. Yet in Olney City Park, the prolific white squirrels outnumber the more familiar gray variety. Protected from hunting and predation within the city limits, the albino squirrels flourish. The tree climbing skills of these lively creatures are most impressive in January during their mating chases. Less common, but no less energetic, are the black or melanistic gray squirrels. Geography is one factor which determines an animal's coloration. Nowhere is this more evident than the Grand Canyon. Here, the Colorado River Canyon acts as an evolutionary barrier forever separating animal species on either side into two isolated and distinct forms. One of the best examples are the tassel-eared squirrels. The kaibab squirrel, with its dark gray body and snowy white tail, is restricted to the kaibab plateau. On the south rim of the Grand Canyon and beyond lives a close relative, the Abert squirrel. Though similar in habits, Aberts are easily distinguished from the Kaibab by their white belly and gray tails. These squirrels inhabit ponderosa pine foothills from Arizona to Wyoming. In the Rocky Mountains, summers are fleeting. Winter slows the tempo of life to nearly a standstill. The red fox, however, remains ever alert in the wintry woods. These foxes are so named for their reddish fur, but there are exceptions. In some litters, a gray variety called a cross fox occurs. Red foxes are characterized by a white tip at the end of their tail. Although more gray than red, cross foxes do bear the white tip. The silver fox 
is yet another color phase of the red fox. Its fur is black, frosted with gray. Wolves show an even wider range of fur color than their smaller canine cousins. The Arctic wolf is typically pure white. Gray wolves can be white, black, brown, or any combination of gray. Perhaps the differences in the wolves' fur reflect the diversity of environments they once inhabited, from desert to tundra. We often think of animals as end products of evolution. Rather, they are constantly changing and adapting. Their many color phases are evidence of how, in nature, the possibilities are endless. In the past, wildlife was categorized mainly by appearance. Animals with unusual color phases were often thought to be a separate species. A few were even protected from hunting because of their rarity. Today, genetic decoding is used to classify similar looking animals. But for the everyday naturalist, distinguishing one species from another can still be tricky, especially when they vary in color between the many shades of gray. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.